Hello everyone and thanks for joining School of the American Rifle. Today we have a Bolt Carrier Group Physical. This is a Brownells Nitride Bolt Carrier Group. Has an M16 cut on it. Let's go ahead and get into the physical. Arm pin retaining pin comes out easy. Um, it does look like this has been tested. You can see a little bit of wear on the carrier rails there. There's a little bit of wear there and then I can see some wear on the back of the bolt lugs. So I would say based on observation it probably has under 500 rounds on it. But I might be a little off there. Let's speak to the owner about the specifics of that. Farm pin came out easy. It does have a interesting finish on it. It almost looks like it's MP3. It might be chrome but just with a different um, final finish on it. It does feel a little lighter too. I, I don't think it's titanium. Cam pin out. You can see there's a little bit of wear on the cam pin so it's, it's seen some use. Let's get the bolt out. You can also see some wear on the tail of the bolt right here. Where it interfaces the carrier. Let's get the extractor out. And our extractor spring assembly was not captured in here. It may have been removed by the owner. We'll get that clicked back into place though. Alright, so let's focus on the bolt first. So let's check headspace. Our bolt face is clean and clear of debris. So let's see what we get with headspace gauges. So let's go with the 223GO 1.4636. Passes. 14646. This is the 556GO. Passes. And we'll check it with the field gauge. We do not want the bolt to rotate or close on this. And it passes. Good headspace. Alright, let's check the recess or the diameter of the bolt face. It passes. This gauge is notched so it clears the ejector right there. The camera doesn't want to focus, but we'll battle through. Alright, that passes. Let's check our cam pin fit. Cam pin fits with a little bit of wobble. We don't have a severely deep groove cut in here, so this is good. There's no markings on it. So we don't have a way to position it the same way every time. But again, no big deal. Set that to the side. Actually, we're going to check magnetism while we're doing this so we don't miss anything. So, bolt is good. Cam pin is good. Firing pin is good, extractor is good, retaining pin really isn't important to check for this, but I still do it anyway. And the extractor pin. So everything's not magnetic, but I often get questions videos, why do I check for magnetism? So this is a demilled imported round. I believe this might be Silver Bear. Um, I've demilled it, I've fired the primer, I've emptied the powder out. So this is a sanitary round for a classroom environment. And I'm going to grab my magnet. So I'll show you that this is magnetic. It is a magnet. See, it picks up things. So we check for magnetism with this non-magnetic washer here. Watch what happens when you use a magnet against some imported ammo. Or the casing. So as the gun feeds and extracts with imported ammunition or ammunition that has a steel casing or ammunition that has bimetal projectiles, which is why this is magnetic, it's not armor piercing ammo, it's a bimetal projectile. Every little bit of shaving that comes off of the ammunition as the gun is operating can stick to fire control group or bolt carrier group components and possibly cause a malfunction. If you're shooting a 
uh, ammunition that is brass case or full metal jacket with copper, you don't have to worry about that. But imported ammunition mainly can cause issues if you have magnetism. So get that question a lot. I cover it a lot, but some people don't always uh, go through all the videos. So I wanted to cover that again in a video just so we catch and cover all bases. All right, now we checked the cam pin. That's good. Let's check the opening for the cam pin and the bolt. This is a gauge that I've uh, tested and evaluated for a long time. This is a taper plug gauge. It's flat and it's looking for an egged out hole. So this is my no-go side. I prefer for this not to go in all the way and it barely clears the opening so it passes the no-go. This right here is one thousandths larger than this. And this is flattened out so it's possible sometimes that it won't take the round gauge because the hole may be egged out but on the sides it's not as long as it is this way so what we'll do is we'll try this and it passes let's see if it passes with this and it does after a lot of use or if you have poor fit between the cam pin and the bolt this hole can egg out this way and this gauge will swallow get swallowed up by the bolt if you have that excessive amount of stretch or wear so it passes Next up, let's do our ejector test. I did test this off camera and it feels good. It's not a super strong spring, but it does have sufficient tension to do its job. The ejector also does have a good bevel on the edge, which I like to see. Let's check the firing pin hole. Takes the go side. No go side does not go in. That's a pass. All right, now let's check the bolt tail. This is our no go and our fields. Does not take the no go, and the field's not going to go in either, so the bolt tail passes. Let's check bolt rings. We forgot to do that out of the gate, so we'll put this into the carrier. And I can tell by feel it's going to pass, but we'll set it up. Good to go. So the rings pass. All right, let's check with our micrometer, see what our support shoulder measures out as. Let's make sure we're zeroed. And we are. Measure out at 0.5274. Good. All right. This aside. So everything on our bolt passes. We'll set that to the side. Now let's check our extractor. Check with the go side, and it passes. And check with the no go side. That does not go in, so this passes. Feel the extractor claw, see what we get. It's a decent extractor claw, it's not great. Um, the way that I teach in classes is this should have the feel of puppy teeth. So it does grab my thumb, but it's not super sharp. Let's check and make sure that the pivot pin rotates freely, and it does. And let's see what's going on with this extractor spring assembly we do have the o-ring they come in various colors some um, you'll see these brownish color ones most typically they're black sometimes you'll see some odd colors like orange Let's see if i can get this to click in and it does so the spring or the pocket here is a little bit oversized or this spring is undersized so let me grab another spring real quick just to check and see if it fits into the hole and see what our issue is Gonna grab a spring co spring and we'll test it with that. And we can try a cold spring as well. So let me open this up. I 
It's a Colt extractor spring. These are gold in color. And this is a Spring Co. 5 coil. Let's see if the spring co will click in place. Nope, it's actually a little undersized. Let's see if the Colt will go in. That one might be going forever. Yeah, our Colt spring is somewhere in the shop but it would not go into the pocket. So I'm thinking that this spring right here is just on the smaller side. And that's why it's not clicking into place. Now the spring itself does have pretty low tension on it. I don't have a test for the spring. My normal rule is to replace this if I believe that it's suspect. So if this were my bolt carrier group, I would replace this spring on here. Now, does that mean that it won't run? No, it's using the donut and the insert, so it should have sufficient tension between those two items. I prefer not to run both of them because sometimes with a good spring, it can give you too much extractor tension. So this particular one is not a pass in my book, but it's also not a fail either. Um, it's more of a subject subjective thing. Try to find that cold spring later on after we're finished shooting the video, but no worries, I have several. All right, let's check firing pin protrusion. Our firing pin does move freely. This does have an M16 profile, has the larger flange there. Let's see what we get for protrusion. O34 on the longer spec but we're still a pass we don't want to exceed 0 0.036 so we're good let me look at the tip tip doesn't have any divots or damage let's try to get this in focus and there we go tip looks good like I said, it has a really smooth finish. It has like a pewter look to it. It doesn't look like it's chrome. It might be. And it feels a little bit on the light side. All right, let's get into the bolt carrier. Let's check and make sure we have a clear path for the gas key. And we do. There we go. Let's measure the overall length. Come over here a little bit. Six six nine, nice. I like to see that. So if you have a bolt carrier group that's slightly on the longer spec, you're less likely to have an issue with um, buffer retainer impact damage. Sometimes you can have a lower receiver that has the buffer retainer hole that's drilled in the wrong location. So when the gun goes in the battery, the bolt carrier comes forward, it allows, because the hole's in the wrong spot, allows the buffer to actually impact the buffer retainer when the gun's going in the battery. Um, the other issue that can allow buffer retainer contact with the buffer is if the bolt carrier is too short. So if the bolt carrier is short and it comes forward, the buffer is going to come further forward as well. Um, so if you have a bolt carrier that's on the longer spec like this, and you have a lower receiver that has the hole that's slightly off, this can be a remedy for a problem. So I like to see that. Let me get my uh, one of my torque wrenches and we're going to do our reverse carrier key test. I haven't been able to do videos much lately because of my class schedule and I also broke the bore scope. Um, we have it repaired and back into action. This will be the first video that we've done with our repaired scope. So let's go ahead and move this over to the vise. This does have unmarked fasteners. There's no YFS markings on there. The staking looks very good. A lot of metal displaced. Let's set our wrench to 30 inch pounds. 
Sometimes I set this before the video, and sometimes I forget. Right there. And let's see what we get. That passes. And that passes. So we passed our reverse torque test for these screws. Let's move along to carrier key alignment and carrier key gauging. So carrier key insert. Let's see if our carrier keys line up. I'm seeing more and more problems lately with this. Um, sometimes you can see it visually. If you put a pin in here, you can see that the carrier key angles upwards or downwards. Sometimes you can see it doesn't quite sit level in the carrier. If you look at the back, sometimes you can see a gap where the carrier key is sitting off to the right or the left because they didn't cut this channel wide enough so it won't lay down in there. Um, sometimes you look at it this way and you can see that the carrier key points this way or that way. Um, about every class that we've had lately, we've had an issue with misalignment severely where you can see it visually. You don't even have to do this test. There we go. We passed. Very good. Set this off to the side. Let's check with our go and no go gauge. It takes the go side. No go side does not go in. I do see more nitride bolt carrier groups that fail this test here that I do. Um, what I suspect is some companies who have bolt carrier groups and gas keys um, spec'd out and finished by another company is they don't take into account um, when the three bores machined or when the carrier keys machined they don't account for a lack of chrome so if the company who manufactured these base components intended for them to be chromed what I suspect is, is when they don't chrome them and they were spec'd out to be chromed and they nitride it the openings remain too large so with nitride, you're just basically hardening the surface. You're not adding anything to build up to make the dimensions smaller out here. Smaller in here or smaller in here. So that's what I suspect sometimes with nitride components. It's not always the case, but this is great. I do see a lot of nitride that eat up the no-go and also have larger three-bore dimensions. All right, so we'll be using our bore scope here in a minute, but let's get our three-bore test going. So we're going to do the first, which is the bolt shoulder support. Let's go up on here and see what we get. Pass the first green, second green, and the yellow it does not go on. So it has good bolt shoulder support or interface. Now this is the gas ring run. Passes the first green, second green. We have a gas efficient secondary run, which is the gas ring run. So that's good. Now let's check the interface with the bolt tail. Passes the first green gauge. Second green gauge passes. It felt pretty tight. I don't think the yellow is going to go. It doesn't. So we have a gas efficient bolt carrier group. All right, let me get a swab, clean out the inside of this. I may have been incorrect about this. This may not be nitride. The inside of this looks like it's chromed, and it is. So this is not a nitride bolt carrier group. This is a chrome lined. It's just a phosphate finished bolt carrier group. So I was incorrect on my initial look of it, but it definitely has chrome on the inside. It's probably hard to detect on the camera, but there's definitely chrome there. So this is not nitride. This is a phosphate exterior chrome lined bolt carrier group. All right, let's get our bore scope fired up. This just came back from repair from uh, Gradient Lens, which makes the Hawkeye bore scopes. This is a 17 inch rigid model. I've had this uh, for several years now. Used this in countless classes. Um, it's seen a good bit of use. My last class um, that I was holding, I had this laying on um, the table and I knocked it off with my apron and it hit the ground and I didn't think it was a big deal until I picked it up and tried to look through it and the, the image was completely black. Um, 
my heart sort of dropped there for a second because this is a very expensive borescope. Um, I think even if you buy these on sale without the camera adapter, they run about $800, $900. Very expensive instrument. Um, reached out to Gradient Lens, Hawkeye, and told them that I needed to send it in for repair and uh, got it back and there was no charge for the repair. And it was destroyed. I took a picture and put it on social media. Basically there's a glass rod an optical glass rod that runs down the length of this and when I dropped it I shattered that rod and I don't know how many pieces but when I took the back end off glass was falling out so it, it hit the ground hard enough to destroy the inner components of this which are the precise parts that make it so expensive but they fixed it at no cost so uh, pretty impressive on their part they did not have to do that um, I'm extremely thankful grateful this is probably one of my most uh, valued instruments out of all the equipment that I use because this tells a lot of things that the human eye can't see when you're doing inspections. So I wanted to thank Gradient Lens uh, Hawkeye for fixing the scope up. Um, I would have paid full price for the repair or replaced it if it was unrepairable. But I uh, wanted to throw that into the video. Really expensive instrument, has really good customer service. So let's get into this. Let's fire up the bore scope, get our light going. And let's go inside. Now when I did break the bore scope, um, I broke it on day one of a two-day class and I didn't have a backup. So what I did um, do so I could get the students a good inspection of their bolt carrier groups and their barrels was I ordered a test long uh, bore scope from Amazon for next day shipping. We have it off here on the right. It actually worked pretty good. That's a $50 bore scope. It has a 90 degree viewer on it, so you can actually look at the side of what you're inspecting. The only complaint that I would say about this is that the focus is much more clunky with this. You have to basically adjust the tip on this model. This is how you change the focus. You screw this in or out. So if you're doing a barrel inspection for four barrels that are all 5.56, you set it and you can inspect all four, all four barrels. But if you want to check gas port alignment you have to change your focus because it's looking up to try to see that the gas blocks align so you have to mess with that adjustment a good bit and then let's say you want to use it for bolt carrier groups we have three distinct measurements in here that we're trying to look at so every time you look at a different dimension you have to change the front end on that particular test long to get a proper focus on the Hawkeye which is much more money I can just Grab the back end of the scope and change my focus, which is what I do in the videos, and you may not even notice it. That being said, here's the inside of the first run. Very smooth. Pretty impressed by that. Almost no tooling marks at all. We have a little bit of fouling there from it being fired. This is our gas ring run. Quite smooth there. We can see a little bit of machine marks. There's a line there where it caught some firing residue, or that's where the end of the gas rings actually stop. So that's not wear or a defect. This is the, the actual run right here. Very smooth. And then we're going to go into our bolt tail seal right here. Let me change our focus. And that one's a little bit rough, but not bad. You're rarely going to see perfection when you're looking for these kinds of things. If you're breaking out a bore scope, even if it's one of the more affordable test longs, it's going to be a rare thing for you to get absolute perfection out of this image right here. All right, so overall, this uh, Brown Owls phosphate, I was wrong, and chrome lined bolt carrier group did well. You have to remember this is an example of one. Um, the spring on this is really the only thing that stuck out as a problem for this. Um, it doesn't seat properly in here. Um, if you don't want to replace the spring, one little trick that I tell students in class is, is put a dab of grease right there and that will keep the spring self-contained when you take it out so it doesn't fall out and hit the ground and roll away or get lost. But overall, um, this bolt carrier group did very well. Hope you found this video educational and thanks for watching.